Hello, and thank you for joining us for a deep dive on compliance with Cloud Radial. We've been getting a lot of interest in compliance recently, so we figured we'd use September's product update webinar for a deep dive on just that. Cloud Radial was built from the ground up with compliance in mind, and it's not only a great way to keep you and your clients on the same page about compliance, but it's also a great way to bring evidence to your ongoing sales efforts. Today, Jeff is going to take us on a deep dive into compliance, and at the end, we'll take some of your questions. So feel free to submit those, and remember to submit feature requests uh, in your portal under Partner Account Settings on the right-hand side. Um, how are you doing today, Jeff? I'm good, Seth. Uh, real good. I appreciate that. Uh, appreciate everybody joining us today. Um, I think we've got an interesting uh, roundup of compliance issues. So um, I guess we'll just jump right in um, and talk about cloud radial compliance and how that works together and really what an amazing opportunity this is i think for for all msps uh, i want to go through real quickly um it looks like compliance to to a lot of people look at this it just looks like a, a an alphabet soup of of words whether that's hipaa gdpr socks there's a lot of stuff going on and I, it's interesting in doing looking at the compliance picture today versus two years ago when we launched Cloud Radio, and how much has changed in that two year period of time. Uh, when uh, two years ago, we were focused on, on HIPAA and, and the traditional things uh, of, of activity. And typically an MSP could avoid compliance issues if they, if they avoided healthcare and potentially finance. Uh, but now with the regulatory landscape the way it is, it's almost impossible. In fact, it is impossible. We'll just say it's impossible for any MSP, uh, really anywhere in the globe, to avoid uh, compliance. And uh, we've talked to a lot of MSPs that try to avoid it by steering clear of healthcare. But at the end of the day, it's it, an MSP is going to be accountable for some form of compliance structure. Uh, in Texas. Um, where we're located, uh, the state of Texas just recently passed a law talking about uh, breach notification. Uh, and so now an MSP potentially is on the hook to notify the state of Texas uh, in the event of a breach, or certainly their, their clients are all on, on the hook for notifying the state of a breach. And I suspect that Texas isn't unique in that. Uh, California has passed a very wide ranging uh, California Consumer Protection Act. Uh, basically, at the end of the day now, compliance just has to be baked into every MSP's role. So if you think about this today, an MSP that doesn't understand compliance is like an accountant that doesn't understand the tax code. It's compliance is becoming extremely fundamental to what an MSP does today. As much as we would all like to just stick with repairs and support, uh, compliance now is, is going to become, uh, in fact it is, it's just prevalent. And whether you understand you're accountable for it today or whether you're going to find out that you're accountable for it when something bad happens, you're accountable for it. And so I want to spend just a couple of seconds going through um, uh, compliance and then we'll get into the cloud radio pieces that make compliance work. Compliance is a framework, and so it is a combination. Almost all of the compliance issues revolve around these six things. Uh, there's rules and best practices. There's the pieces that uh, basically are mandated or things that, are, that should be done in order to keep data or uh, personal information or healthcare information safe. There's a regulatory understanding to make sure that, uh, again, we may assume that everything we do is in that compliance framework. There may be things that, are, that go beyond that. For example, in HIPAA, in a lot of cases, there's a physical aspect uh, that has to be done, maybe can be done by the MSP, maybe not, but there's an MSP or there's a physical level of security that has to be done. Um, and so a regulatory understanding of what's involved in those regulations is very key. Documentation is critical uh, in the whole process and the way things are documented, uh, training, monitoring, evaluation, and accountability and responses. All these six things make a, uh, a compliance framework. And I think it's, it's good to spend just a second talking about how we got here and why compliance is becoming so prevalent and so, in a sense, so onerous uh, on MSPs and on, on end users. Basically, if you look at all the high profile activities over the last few years, breaches, uh, security hacks, uh, everything that's gone on, 
everything that has gone on has seemingly required or seemingly created outraged consumers, uh, which creates outraged regulators, which then creates regulations. And so basically the compliance frameworks are designed to satisfy governments so that governments can satisfy their, their uh, citizens that things are well run uh, and, and, and that there's a standard by which everybody should be judged. And so if you look at compliance, there's really two different parts to this. There's the complying piece, which is doing things the right way. It's, it's putting uh, antivirus on computers. It's uh, making sure that hard drives are encrypted. It's, it's the complying piece. And then there's the compliance piece. And that involves documenting, monitoring, and responding to the complying part. So if, you, if you're busy complying, but you're not monitoring, you're not documenting, you're not in compliance. So if you think about all this, and again, this is all coming, coming into, um, you know, what we used to call it CYA, and I assume it still is, but a, a cover your rear end exercise, because everything you're doing is basically to um, cover yourself in case something bad happens and to have the processes in place so that something bad does happen, you know how to respond. Robin Robbins has a, has a great analogy out there where she talks about uh, a businessman that is hacked. He's the victim. He's, the, you know, he's been, he's been basically his data has been stolen by uh, typically a foreign operative. Now this, this businessman is a victim, but if it turns out that he wasn't using passwords, wasn't using encryption, basically was careless, he goes from being a victim to the victimizer, right? So instead of being the victim of a hack, uh, he's now responsible for basically disclosing all of his client information to, um, you know, to potential worst consequences. And so a lot of compliance issues, if you can, if you think about this from a CYA perspective, are basically making sure that um, your clients and you, if something bad happens, become the victims and not the victimizers. And you do that by showing a compliance posture. So basically no matter what you do and this is important you will never ever be compliant because compliance isn't is a responsibility it's not an action putting antivirus uh, on workstations does not make you compliant putting um, uh, documenting uh, systems does not make you compliant compliance is not a physical or uh, a digital action it's a process now as bad as compliance is for MSPs and for clients in the sense of how onerous it is, uh, it's also a huge opportunity. And anybody that had a good compliance framework pre-COVID has now been basically turned upside down because of the new mobility issues. People that work from home um, now create huge compliance and risk threats. Uh, Excel files with customer data that were nice, safely stored on a server at the office or in the cloud now can be stored on local users PCs and that opens up a huge compute a huge compliance risk to the organization. So one of the things that an MSP has to do is basically educate their customers and explain to them where uh, where compliance fits in. Now a lot of this again is about making sure that you're doing everything that's appropriate uh, and basically making sure that if something bad does happen, again, you can explain it away. I don't know if you've seen in the news lately, but an Uber executive was charged with a felony uh, and, faces, and faces potential time, not because he was hacked, but because he didn't disclose the hack to regulators. And so something that seems simple, like trying to avoid embarrassment for your firm, now turns into a potential felony in the course of, of a regulatory oversight. And of course, the bigger the company, the bigger the client, the more records that were breached, the more regulators are gonna be concerned and outraged um, and will uh, seek, um, seek retribution. When it comes to explaining compliance to your clients, the number one thing you can do, again, we have this diagram of, of hierarchy of, of responsibility, hierarchy of risk, hierarchy of opportunity, and compliance sits right above continuity. If you've, got, if you've got backup in place, security in place, now you can start laying on top the compliance pieces. And, it's, and this is a good diagram to talk to compliance, to explain compliance to your clients. 
And at the end of the day, our view is compliance should be as, as, as basically as, as rich an opportunity for MSPs as continuity is. So if you're already busy selling data backup or storage craft or any of the other backup solutions today, um, then you've probably got a, a, at least a, a, a sizable fraction of that that's also available uh, in compliance and in compliance frameworks as well. So now, now that we've laid the framework, I want to go into cloud radial and how cloud radial helps with that. Because one of the things that is, is critical and I'm, is, is the, the fact that it's viewed as a process and not as a one-off. Again, I can't emphasize enough, compliance is not about putting antivirus on workstations, it's about designing a process to make sure those workstations are secure. And so if you look at Cloud Radio, one of the things we did early on in the product, and it's baked in from, from two years ago and is, is improving today, and we'll have some major upgrades next month, is basically being able to look at, at compliance from the client side, because again, the client is ultimately responsible to their auditors and to um, their investors, potentially to their customers for complying with, with all of the compliance mandates. And so with Cloud Radio, since we were designed from the client side in, what we focused on was everything related to helping that client, your clients, basically demonstrate uh, a better compliance posture. So infrastructure, uh, again, what we're doing in infrastructure reporting, which we'll see here in the demo real, real soon, is implementing those best practices. Again, making sure that things are done um, across the spectrum of monitored systems. Making sure that policies are, are monitored daily. So again, if, if there are exceptions to uh, best practices, those are spotted and reported to clients making sure that that things are documented everything you do for that client should go into what we call the report archives and i'll show you some great examples of that here in a minute but the, the report archives again are your way to demonstrate that you're doing the things daily to basically help that client comply with all of their mandates and again when you get into knowledge base and courses and planning now you're really helping clients understand the requirements and you're helping them monitor and evaluate and make future changes to that going forward. And, and the last thing that we do at CloudRail, and we've done this again from the very beginning, is even in our terms, we help you with accountability because we offer uh, a BAA agreement for clients. We offer a, a GDPR data processor agreement for clients. Our goal is in our terms and conditions to again, solidify your base. So as you work with your clients, you can ensure that, that you can ensure to them that you're working with only uh, reputable certified vendors uh, and from there that they're working with a with a reputable MSP and again that helps their chain of, of, of process to understand what they're doing. Now I want to go into the product itself and show you how this works together. So let me do a quick um, video change here. Yep, wrong one. There, that looks a little better. So, so now we're in the Cloud Radio portal itself, and um, we're going to spend just a few minutes going through the things that we just talked about. So, so one of the things in Cloud Radio that I think is um, uh, important to see is the fact that again cloud radial is that compliance portal and and one of the things is is we get a lot of uh, installations that are geared around ticketing portals or maybe account management portals um, so again we're either helping the service staff um, get tickets in more efficiently or we're helping the account managers plan for that client um, more effectively longer range but at the, at the heart of it, Cloud Radial is a compliance portal. And if you're not using it for that or not taking advantage of those, those features, it's, it's either a potential opportunity to go in there and better serve the client or uh, add additional levels of, of support fees on top of that to show them uh, and, and charge them for compliance. One of the benefits of charging for compliance is you get to explain the value of compliance to your clients. So if you charge more for compliance, and, and they pay for it, you're actually helping your clients understand the value of it and understand how it fits in reducing the risk uh, and exposure in those areas. 
So as we look at the product, first thing we're gonna dig into is the actual infrastructure reporting. And we keep tweaking on this, we keep working on it a little bit, but basically what we're doing here is we're creating a collaborative environment for you and that, um, that client. So if you think about the typical issues that you run into with a client. So for example, you, you, you coach your clients that they need to have um, antivirus on all the machines, or you counsel them that they need to have all their machines encrypted, or you counsel them that they need better data governance to basically make sure all of their data is secured and protected in the authorized locations. What we're doing here is we're providing this reports back to your clients so that they can see at a glance what's going on. So as we, we had the security tab up here underneath endpoints, and if you drill down into this for your clients, you're basically gonna be able to quickly, or they're gonna be able to quickly see which machines aren't encrypted. So this, is, this gets into one key aspect of it. We're gonna see if things have been patched correctly, if things are on the right release, whether they're protected by antivirus, um, and again, we're providing them at a glance what's going on. So if you've, if you've counseled your clients that they should be encrypted on their storage and they're not encrypted, basically now you've, you've done the first step of basically working with your clients to educate them on a compliance posture. If they don't do it, uh, as you'll see in the planner, you'll be able to document that. And now you've done a, it, all you can do in helping that client's helping that client achieve compliance, even if they don't do it, you still kind of, again, CYA covered, covered yourself for the issues where they, they went against your best advice. And so what we wanna do here is look at the security tab as we drill down into one of these, we can see, we can provide more detail. And again, this is all client facing. So again, they're gonna have access to all of this, but we're showing them potentially where they don't have good data governance, especially in things like with uh, Dropbox and some and, and maybe Box and some other services that don't provide HIPAA protections or maybe don't provide compliance protections out of the box like Office 365 does. We need to be able to spot that, identify it, and, and highlight that to clients. We need to show them where things aren't, aren't set up correctly. Uh, we need to be able to show them potentially where screensavers aren't enabled or passwords aren't set. So again, the goal is to be able to basically work with your clients to present them the information so that they can understand it better and they can take an action. And again, like anything else here throughout the product, you can always hit the planner button and from that, add that to the planner to talk about. So if we know we have an endpoint issue here where the data is not encrypted, we can add that to our planner to talk to them about. And again, what we're doing and essentially is we're identifying a better compliance for that client and essentially we're transferring the risk of the action from the MSP to the client themselves, right? So again, if the client doesn't wanna do stuff, you can't make them do it, but you can as, as a guidance, just like an attorney can't make you do the right things in situations, you, you wanna be that counselor to the client, providing them the right information, giving them a, a, a heads up on things that could potentially go wrong down, down the road. So again, we're gonna provide a lot of that stuff here through the endpoints, we're gonna provide them the list of, of charts and information. So again, to provide that stuff at a glance. Um, and as you'll see here, we have a lot of different ways to, again, to report the basic information of this stuff to clients. Now we also in uh, 365, if you've integrated with the 365 dashboard, we've also provided uh, some issues related to uh, email volume, because again, every email here, what we're trying to do is educate clients that every email is a potential risk to the business. And then from that, start driving into um, the, the ability to use MFA uh, and to basically encourage strong authentication inside of your clients. Uh, we also wanna be able to, uh, uh, whoops. We wanna be able to also kind of highlight any issues where maybe their emails have already been exposed in the real world and again be able to not only show them that, that the information's out there but again where the protections are so again what we're doing is we're starting to educate clients through these reports about the things that they need to pay attention to and then hopefully in the planner and remediation steps when you get to the monitoring and management piece of this you can put effective plans in place to deal with these issues now the other piece of this gets into um, what we call the policies 
And with policies, what we're trying to do, because again, one of the problems with reports is information gets buried in reports and, and can't be seen. So if I wanna look at which machines maybe don't have the right passwords in place or don't have the right password protections or encryptions in place, we need to be able to drill down on that more deeply um, but we also just basically want a, a snapshot of what's going on. So from there, what we do is we use these policies to basically scan things every night. And so on this page, we'll give it broken down by, again, those seven levels of things. And so we can spot at a glance the things that are potentially affecting compliance. And so for those policies, we've identified issues with, with machines that don't have the right OS, things that don't have encryption. Uh, screensavers, again, we've done a lot of, there's 55 different policies that we scan or can scan for every night uh, and some variations on those so you can actually generate even more to make sure that the, the setup from the client reporting pieces are where they need to be. Because again, the difference here with policies versus what you do with your RMM is again, everything here is client facing. So what we wanna try to do here is not present the problems that you know you have to solve from a technical standpoint, but the things that we want the client to focus on, either that you're doing for them or the things that they need to do by authorizing you to go do them. And so we had this report by summarization. Uh, we'll break it down into details. We can provide risk scoring for each of these policies. So again, for and you can adjust this scoring by client, uh, by groups of clients. So again, if you've got healthcare clients, you can, you can dial up the security threat posed by encryption versus clients that don't. Um, you can also look at this by asset class. Uh, or your clients can look at this by asset class. So I can look at all the things that are related to endpoints. I can see where, you know, potentially I have other issues outside of compliance issues. But again, what we're doing is we're providing everything to that client to be transparent in helping them understand um, their posture. We, you know, since we actually added uh, dashboards to this whole process, now you can actually dial it in again, more of at a glance pieces. So again, users can see what's going on, see what's going on in their policies, uh, see at a glance the things that they need to be paying attention to. So we've done a lot here to basically highlight them all the issues that they can address or they can authorize you to address in their current environment to make them more compliant and, and less at risk of being the victimizer in a breach as opposed to the victim. The other piece we have that is very, very powerful under compliance is, is under reports, and we call this report archives. And report archives are actually a very simple concept. And the concept of a report archive is, is the part of the process with compliance is I need to show a massive amount of effort because the more effort I put into monitoring things, remediating things, improving the, the posture shows that I'm taking compliance seriously. And if I take compliance seriously, I potentially get a lot of credit for that if problems turn out. So if you look at a, a typical report archive, as you create a report archive at a client level, each report archive gets an email address. So you can either email reports into this report archive or you can upload reports. So if you're doing stuff now, um, through backup for backup or security alerting, anything like that, you can send to this email address, just add that to the existing uh, process, uh, to the existing email distribution list, and then that report will show up automatically uh, in the report archive with the added benefit that if you want, the report archive can also trigger the alerting piece as well. So if you're not getting reports in a certain amount of time, or uh, it comes in with, with invalid keywords, you can actually set routing um, so that you can route and create a ticket on your PSA, the fact that something's not working correctly, or at least generate an email to yourself that the report came in with the missing keywords. And this is extremely helpful if you're doing like Azure Backup or other things that maybe don't natively integrate with your PSA, then you can basically bring in those reports from, from Azure into here, check for those missing keywords, and if not, it's gonna generate a ticket for the right company um, when those reports come in with, the, with bad results or they, they quit coming in. So again, the, the alerts here are very strong. Now we also make that very easy to do at scale for clients because again, what's good posture for one is good posture for all. And so if you go under partner clients under report archives, you can actually create a report archives that will be applied to every client. And so if I want to do, um, you know, if, if, I, if clients routinely have OFIC or any network room reports, I can basically generate an archive that will then be created every time for all of my existing clients 
but it'll also be created for all of my new clients. And again, what we have here is an easy way to manage all of that, to see all of those email addresses. So again, if somebody is, is tasked with basically adding these distribution email addresses to the reports or to the backup logs, uh, this is gonna be very easy for them to do. So again, all of that stuff is here and it's broken out by company, by report type. So again, it, it's we wanna make this as simple as possible. But again, the goal, it will take a, a few minutes to get all of your reporting tied into the report archives. But once you do it, it's basically set it up and then compliance should be documenting, should be self-documenting every day. Uh, and then as you do one-off reports, let's say you're still using uh, some of the compliance reports from, from a lot of good firms out there that do uh, extra, extra reporting in that area, you can add those in manually into this. Um, and so you really, again, you get a tremendous amount of, of capability to push all this information um, into clients, um, portals every single day because it's not only important for your clients to be able to see it for you to be able to see it but remember they also may have auditors or they may have outside uh, uh, parties and, and consulting with them and so what we want to be able to do is make it very easy for deliver all those reports to them because it's already going to be in their portal uh, and if you've ever had to work with an outside audit firm for a client or you've ever had to work with a uh, an outside consultant you know what a, a pain they can be to work with and how much detail they want and if all that detail is already pre-generated in the client's portal, uh, now you've solved a, a lot of problems. And better yet, uh, you've been you've demonstrated you're very proactive, right? Because again, when the auditor comes in and he sees all this stuff up front, they're going to be impressed by the way that you're managing that client, uh, as well as the client is. And again, talk about stickiness. A client needs to be able to prove they're compliant. And if if they let you go and you and you have all the the compliance reporting that's going to be a challenge for them to for them to prove up after you're terminated to be able to prove that they were compliant during the period that you were there. So again, you've got a lot of a lot of things here that work to your benefit from being able to document things better, to be able to, to basically be able to retain clients better, potentially upcharge for things that go through there. Um, and there's still more to be had here. One of the things that becomes a big part of this, now we've talked about uh, best practices, we've talked about uh, policies we've talked about reporting but we also have the user equation and everything as well nothing again nothing messes up uh, a compliant environment more than a user right so what we want to do is basically train users every step of the way so that they can be compliant and and, and know what best practices are again think about this as, as you know and I hate to say it but it is kind of that CYA exercise because again if you can train the users or you provided the training for the users but they don't take it, again, you've done what you can do, right? And so if you don't provide any sort of HIPAA training or compliance training or cybersecurity training, then, then you've actually opened yourself up for responsibility because you didn't provide it. But if you provide it and they don't do it, that's a different story. And so what we do inside of Cloud Radial, and, and again, we bring this all together, and this kind of, again, shows you how much we thought about compliance when we, we created this product a few years ago, is the three basic courses that come with it. Um, one is, is on HIPAA, uh, which is, again, for all the US-based customers dealing with healthcare. A lot of times, companies will spend up to $30 per year per employee just to have this HIPAA course. And again, talk about a valuable um, piece to offer up to clients. Taking this course, and again, you're free to change it and improve it any way that you want, but offering up this HIPAA course to everybody in the organization built into your portal is either a potentially chargeable event or is extremely high value because again, the typical market price is about $30 a year or more to deliver just this one course. And then cybersecurity, again, we have the basic shell of a course here, it's solid. But again, we encourage you to add your own experiences, work in the, 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 the tool set you currently use into this. Because in the cybersecurity tools, again, if you push these two or two similar type courses onto them, again, you've done what you can do to push this. Now, we've also partnered with Bigger Brains, so we have the full course catalog from Bigger Brains out there as well, which includes more advanced um, uh, compliance training. Um, so again, they've got more information on HIPAA. Uh, they've also got more information on security. So again, there's more deep dives there that are available uh, if you take advantage of the full uh, Bigger Brains package. But again, what you're doing there is providing this information to your clients. 
and they can monitor themselves exactly what's going on because underneath compliance there's a training tab and the training tab basically shows the the administrator in that company or the company owner exactly who's taken what courses and who's completed what courses so if i want to see um, everybody that's taken the, taken the cybersecurity course I can see that we still have a big gap here to go resolve, right? So we need to work on basically making sure everybody gets set up. Um, but then from that, I can tell, we can also have these courses expire, ex, expire on an annual basis. So basically it, 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 after a year of taking the course, the, the user will be encouraged again to take that course or it'll show up as required again on their homepage that they need to take it and then the reporting will, will pick up from there as well. So again, what we want to do is get users into a compliant space, uh, get them compliant trained, and then keep them there over the, the years going forward. And then the other piece that you've got, which is really cool from a um, uh, basically a collaboration standpoint, is you have this knowledge base. And, and again, with Cloud Radial, everything is collaborative. So in the knowledge base, you can create all the articles related to best practices for IT, but your users can also add the, the internal office policies, their internal training documents, their physical train, their physical setup issues. They can basically deal with all of those things here. So again, from a user perspective, when they come to the knowledge base, they only have the, the knowledge base articles related to the things that you think they need to have for compliance but they can also have all the things that the compliance officer in that company thinks they need to have. So now what you have is a very strong uh, system to, to train your users, uh, to keep them trained, to keep them documented, and again, keep them in a single pane of glass for all of their compliance issues. So again, we've gone from, um, from reporting to, um, to compliance or exception monitoring, we've gone to reporting, we've gone to training. And again, we're talking about this all as being your portal, right? So at the end of the day, again, Cloud Radial is a great solution for uh, ticketing. It's a great solution for account managers, but it's an even better and more powerful platform for compliance. And, and sadly, or, or maybe, maybe it's better for MSPs, but sad for clients because they're the ones that bear the burden of it is it's a great compliance tool. And again, compliance, it, it, I'm convinced in the next two years, compliance will be the new security uh, opportunity for MSPs. So just like the last two years have been protecting against malware and ransomware, the next two years are basically going to be taking the mobility and the work from home and basically now there's these extremely hybrid and um, uh, remote models and making sure there's just as compliant as they were in that walled garden of the office. So that's the, the quick overview of Cloud Radial and compliance. Um, there are um, uh, some good resources out there um, and we'll, we'll be sure and provide that in the, um, in the, uh, follow up, you know? in the, in the follow up later on. Uh, Seth, do we have any, any questions from, um, or anything actually done a great job answering uh, uh, most of all of them. I think one kind of just uh, general theme was uh, had to do, uh, Brian uh, mentioned, uh, Brian Weiss uh, mentioned uh, about being notified when things like a date breach happens, um, you know, as far as, you know, manually checking or any sort of options as far as how you would um, be notified when something like that happens. So for data breach notifications, Basically what happens is this is where you get into, and Microsoft has a, a ton of different things with their, their SIM products and other things that are out there. Basically data breaches are very, are basically very client specific and data specific. So typically you're gonna put in place other tools along the way to monitor those data breaches. What you wanna do though, is basically take all of that reporting that you would get from those types of tools um, and feed into your report archives. And so again, what you're documenting is, is basically your best knowledge about the day, about what's going on with clients data. Um, mm -hmm. Clearly there's gonna be some other tools you use uh, in Azure or AWS or from third parties that are gonna be used to help identify potential breaches uh, to client data. And one of the things you wanna do from a, it really is, is incumbent on every MSP now, is to know who to notify when something happens right or at least know that you need to notify somebody because again more of those procedures that are written out 
uh, and more of those that are documented, then the more that counts in the compliance in, in, in the compliance requirement. Yeah, it's amazing how much of a compliance is. We had something written somewhere where we really wanted, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we, we, we wanted to look at it and that, that, that's sometimes a, a big part of it. Um, another thing too uh, uh, from Brian was, um, the question was, is there a central slash master address that can be configured for individual clients? Uh, versus report archives. Thinking about the work to set up all of this, given I have six to eight report ar archives for 65 clients. So you can put everything into one report archive. Um, you know, I mean, we're we're always looking for better ways to do stuff. Um, but one of the things, again, it it doesn't take that long to set them up. Again, if you've got 100 clients, you'll have to do it you know, a hundred times, if you've got six archives, that's potentially 600 email addresses. But it's also something that doesn't have to be done like on day one, you know, as you work with that client, as you work with onboarding those clients, uh, you know, doing a little extra work on getting this stuff tied in uh, pays huge dividends down the road. And so if we can figure out a way to make it easier, we will. Uh, but right now, again, it's, it, we tried to make it as simple as possible with that uh, bulk creation and bulk management of the report archives. Yeah, and to that end, we're always look. We, we are always looking for those feature requests. Um, you know, it's feature requests isn't so much as a thing of like you know pushing you off to the side or or um, you know it's actually a, a really direct request uh, for you guys to tell us how to build the the the, the platform because that's very much uh, where we get our ideas as you guys. So um, if you have like a, a feature that would make that easier, you know. This is this is how I would do it, sort of thing. Please let us know. Yeah, and we've got. I mean, if you go to, uh, if you're a client, you can get to the the feature request board, and we've got hundreds of great ideas out there. Uh, we've we've knocked off well over a hundred of them, um, and we're we're on pace to 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 basically pick that up again. So I think it's you know again we're not. This is a product that nobody has like the perfect answers to. Um, but collectively, we seem to be designing and, and engineering a much better product. And so, uh, again, I can't I can't stress enough. Even if you if you submit something and don't see it right away, uh, one of the things that that you'll see down the road is that we factor that into other things that we're doing, and it's given us insight in the way we need to be taking the product. So, uh, again, we, we unfortunately we can't do every feature request within the week of it's being submitted. Uh, some are, have been on there for for well over a year or more, uh, and but at the same time too, they were all helping shape the product, even if they're not immediately addressed. So uh, again, please keep submitting those. Uh, don't give up hope. Um, and and you know again, because everything does influence what we do in development. Definitely. Um, Stan from north of the border asks, uh, I've got a couple more rolling in here. Um, we have Canadian specific compliance standards. Are we able to integrate these standards, e.g. EHIPA as opposed to HIPAA? Yeah, I mean, there, one of the things that you look at Cloud Radial, it supports that framework. And if you go back to that, that slide earlier where we talk about the six things that make up compliance, one of the things that's interesting on the compliance frameworks whether you look at GDPR, the California piece, the Texas piece, they all basically are starting to evolve around a similar um, structure. And so if, if you look at how those standards and regulations get set, there are actually some, some very interesting working groups behind the scenes that share information, share processes. And so nobody's really developing their standards in a vacuum. They're all working with other people. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if the Canadian regulations uh, have, have are based or basically have inspiration from, you know, the, the HIPAA regulations in the U.S., even if they're not related to medical, right? Again, these, these standard frameworks all kind of, I mean, there's there's conferences that just talk about standards frameworks. So what we want to be able to do with Cloud Radio is support the framework. So again, report archives, they don't care what the standards are. Uh, the policy stuff doesn't doesn't care. Um, you can use the you can create your own courses in the um, in the course uh, guide. Uh, so again, we give you a, basically a lightweight learning management system baked into that. So again, you you've got that ability there. Uh, so there's lots of ways to to adapt cloud radial to support Canadian standards or Australian standards or South African standards or any any place else that we have uh, cloud radial clients. Uh, so we got uh, at least one more here. Uh, uh, 
Peter asks, uh, you mentioned agreements for HIPAA and others. Uh, where are those located? So those are on cloudradial.com slash terms. So maybe I can bring that up here. Oh, you recentered it. Yeah, we were off kilter that whole presentation. <laughs> yeah, so, so again, if you go to our, our terms page, um, you'll see the BAA agreement and you'll see the GDPR agreement, as well as the privacy piece and other things that, again, all these things are designed to help keep you compliant with your client's requirements. I think that's uh i think that's it for questions uh so certainly reach out to support uh if you have any others that we that we didn't address that that are pressing um and uh as always uh you know for feature requests that uh, we really do appreciate those um uh, keep those coming um uh but in the meantime uh, uh really appreciate you guys joining us and uh have a great week thanks everyone